What's up guys, my name is Nam. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you some updates to the unemployment extension and also details on the next stimulus package. So, so far what changed this week was really nothing. So the Democrats and the White House negotiators, they really haven't spoken since Friday and it seems like they're putting off on each other to restart the talks. Nancy Pelosi on Tuesday, she said that she have not heard from Mnuchin or Meadows. So Stephen Mnuchin and also Mark Meadows, they briefed the Senate Republicans on Tuesday for about an hour or so, but it seems like the GOP senators, they really have no reason to think that they're gonna resume the negotiations anytime soon. So basically the past few days, both sides of the party, they've just been playing a blame game. This blame game really does not do anything good since there are over 30 million Americans that are dealing with declines on unemployment benefits and roughly around 20 million Americans that could face homelessness or eviction. But over the weekend, the president, he did issue a round of executive orders and memos to help with this, but it's really not clear if there are legal or even effective on doing what they're supposed to do. So many governors and state officials, they have said their frustrations about the memo requiring that states would have to pay a portion of the unemployment benefits. On Monday, California Governor Gavin Newsom, he said that California would have to make massive budget cuts if the states want to implement President Trump's unemployment plan. He also said that it would create a burden for states as large as California that they could never absorb without again massive cuts to important services. So I'm not really sure if you guys have been following my videos. I didn't make a video about unemployment last week, how there was some individuals in the Council of California trying to develop their own $600 a week uh, unemployment benefit. And the rationale behind this is, was that they were just gonna borrow more money inside of a federal trust fund and they would just pay it over the course of maybe 100 years. But for that article that was published in the LA Times, Gavin Newsom, which is the governor, he really didn't say anything about it. He just said that he would have to review it. So back to what's happening right now. So in the White House memo, Trump, he suggested that states would use the remaining funding from the CARES Act to pay their share of the unemployment benefits. The California governor, he said that 75% of the funding has already gone to the state and has been used to fund schools, health, and other social programs that are responding to the pandemic. The governor, he also said that a 25% match for unemployment benefits could cost the state roughly around $700 million a week. He also said that there's no money sitting in a piggy bank somewhere from the previous CARES Act that can be reconstituted for this particular purpose. The California governor is one of the several governors that have showed disappointments about the administration's move to shift stimulus costs to states. So on Monday, New York governor Andrew Cuomo, he compared Trump's proposal to handling a drowning man in anger. Probably one of the major issues with the president's memos and executive orders are the legalities. So the president and the Democrats, they are predicting that there will be some lawsuits over the weekend's executive orders and memos just due to the fact that he is sidestepping Congress on issues like payroll taxes and unemployment benefits. But many predict that many of the Democrats in Congress are unlikely to actually lead this lawsuit because it will most likely be state officials or private parties that will take these legal challenges and it could take months or even years to actually resolve. Because the truth of the reality is, Democrats, they are worried about how they would look if they're trying to block a much needed aid, such as unemployment benefits or payroll taxes for individuals trying to earn more money because there are plenty of unemployed workers and households struggling to pay the bills during this recession. But on the other hand, there are many Democrats in Congress that are also very confident that two of Trump's controversial orders, which are deferring payroll taxes and also unemployment benefits, will most likely fail. So since the Democrats are thinking that these plans will fail, so they're just thinking that a lawsuit is probably unnecessary. But even if the Democrats, they do decide to sue, it's really unclear if the House can even have any type of legal standing needed to actually move forward with this lawsuit. So with all these legal issues and legalities of what the president can and cannot do is such a gray area, it's kind of confusing sometimes. But on the other side of the spectrum, which is the Senate, which is controlled by the Republicans, they have no plans on filing a lawsuit either, even though that many Republicans like Senator Ben Sass, he called that Trump's orders unconstitutional slop. So on Monday, the Senate Minority Leader, Charles Schumer, he was asked whether or not the Democrats were planning to do a lawsuit. And he says that we're not gonna have to since the plans are unworkable. So from the look of things, it really does not look like the Democrats are trying to pursue a lawsuit, but they're just trying to wait for this plan to fail and they're just gonna point it in his face probably. So many individuals from the White House and the Trump administration, they said that what they're doing, like the executive orders and the memos, is solid legal ground. Because Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin, he said that all of the memos and executive orders were cleared by the Office of Legal Counsel. And he also added, if the Democrats want to challenge us in court and hold up unemployment benefits to hardworking Americans that are out of a job because of COVID, 
they're gonna have a lot of explaining to do. Politics is a dirty game. Recently also, Senator Chris Van Hollen, which is a Democrat from Maryland, he said that the Democrats, they're more concerned about providing additional aid to the people that are suffering than trying to come up with a legal strategy, trying to block Trump in court. He also added that there are some constitutional problems with this, but we should focus on the fact that it doesn't actually deliver any kind of relief that is required. So I get what the Senator is trying to get at, is that, okay, all this stuff already happened and they're not really sure of what they can do about it. But from this point on, that they have to move forward, which meaning the Democrats, of devising a bigger and better plan to help the people. So as a reminder, here are the four orders that were signed over the weekend. So the president, he instructed that the Treasury Department to stop collecting payroll taxes until December 31st for workers who earn below $104,000 a year. So the president, he also called for laid off workers to receive $400 a week from a $44 billion fund that was designated for the Department of Homeland Security. He also called for Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar to study whether or not eviction ban is actually needed. And lastly, he also ordered that interest on student loans held by the federal government to be waived all the way through December 31st. So many legal experts, they actually think that the courts can actually respond pretty quickly to this if they want, or they can move very slowly if they want. So it is said that judges are very often reluctant to intervene with such high profile constitutional battles between the White House and Congress so close to an election that it can determine what party controls each branch of the government. So basically the Democrats are just betting on the fact that Trump's orders are gonna just fail before the court can even rule them out. So many of the Democrats, they actually predict that the payroll tax will fail to deliver any type of economic relief because they think that employers will continue to withhold those taxes from paychecks so they have it on hand whenever they get a bill from the federal government. Because traditionally, workers would have to pay a 6.2% tax on wages, which goes towards Social Security, and which the employer does match by paying the same 6.2%. But the thing is that if the employees are allowed to keep their full wages without being held back for Social Security, then the employer they are the ones who would have to pay this back to the government once this deferral period ends. Many Democrats inside of Congress, they believe that Trump's orders for unemployment benefits would not work just due to the fact that of the $400, $100 of it would have to come from the states. They think that the new benefit system could take months just to get up and running. So Michelle Evermore, which is a senior policy analyst at the National Unemployment Law Project, she says that it looks like an unemployment insurance benefit. It smells like one, but it's absolutely not one. She continued to add, because this is not an unemployment insurance benefit. States systems, they can't pay for regular admin funding. So it will be a while before actually states have this set up and running. But on the other hand, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, on Monday, he said that most states should be able to execute the enhanced unemployment benefits in the next week or two. So if that is the case, you may expect an additional $400 on August 16th or August 23rd. But let's see what happens. But the president, he also told reporters on Sunday that the federal government, they would make a decision about state contributions on a state by state basis. He said that in some instances, maybe the states may have to pay nothing. Another thing that Steven Mnuchin said was that 25% really isn't coming from the state because we already authorized them to use money out of the $150 billion that we just sent them. So in essence, 100% of the money is coming from the federal government. I kind of get what Steven Mnuchin was trying to say, but that $150 billion was set aside for states for different reasons, but not to supply the state with unemployment benefits. All right guys, so that pretty much does it for me. If you guys want two free stocks, one value up to $1,400, you guys can sign up for Webull using the link in the description below. And when you deposit $100, you can get another free stock value up to $250. And if you guys wanna hang out with me some more, check out my videos over here.